Today is June 3rd, 2019. I'm going to do a quick uh, scripture search on almond trees. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. So here's a uh, almond tree in blossom. If you notice uh, the white blossoms and you'll note that even before leaves are on the tree there's almond blossoms and later there will be leaves so this is one of the first flowering trees in Israel and of course where every blossom is there there'll be an almond now if we do um, if we go to study light and do a word search on uh, almonds will come up with three uh, strong numbers three words let's see am I getting that you get the 3869 8246 and 8247 and this is a good starting uh, point for almonds in scripture this is all Hebrew let's look at that first word 3869 it's pronounced lose can you hear that okay lose lose and this word shows up only one place in scripture it's uh, where Jacob is taking different tree branches and putting it in the water for the sheep to get either speckled or spotted sheep But note the word lose. Now, here let's go again. Lose. Lose. Now, this is now a different word, 3870. Now, it's the same, it sounds the same, but this is now a name of a place. And it, as you can see, it means almond tree. And look here. In Genesis, the first place where it shows, we see he came, he called the name of the place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city had been Luz. Now this is Genesis uh, 28, 19, and then also in Genesis 35, 6 and 48, 3, it, it talks about Luz. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel. And then, again, Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. So as you guys know the story, uh, Jacob was fleeing his brother and he slept in a place called Luz. It was a almond grove. It was a city called Luz and he was, he made his, a bed there and then he saw a ladder to heaven and God spoke to him so here we have the first place and he says man this is the house of the Lord Beth means house and El means God house of God so Bethel so Luz is associated with the house of God and then later on when they come back uh, after they go down to Egypt and come out uh, Joshua it says it went from Bethel to Luz, and that's, and continued to the border of, I'm not going to say those names, but it's now setting out boundaries for uh, different tribes. The border continued to Luz, to the side of Luz that is Bethel. So here we, again, we see how Bethel and Luz, even 400 years later, they're calling uh, they're rem remembering the name of its original name, which means all almond grove. So the house of God is an almond grove in, in name meaning. But we'll see how it ties together later on. So let's look at 82. Now, that word lose um, here. 
And I think in Arabic, um, that is, they still use that word. Um, I don't really think they use it so much in the Hebrew. It's It wasn't originally a Hebrew word. My understanding. Now here, let's listen to this. Shaked. Shaked. Now, this is 8247. And this means almond tree, almonds, uh, almond or nuts. So I think this is more... Uh, more into the line of the Hebrew. Let's look where it was first used. It was, if you remember the famine, and uh, again we have Jacob here, and one of his sons, Joseph, has disappeared, and they're sending for more food. And he says, well, let's send them some of the good produce of the land, and it says one of them was almonds. See there, that last word, almonds. So he was sending some almonds down to Egypt uh, to curry favor with actually his son, Joseph. He didn't know it, though, at the time. So here we have the word first showing up in Scripture in, uh, in this form. Shaked. Shaked. And let's look at... Now look at the next time it shows up. Number 17.8. Oh, can you see that? I maybe let's go up a little bit better. Now the next day Moses went into the tent of testimony, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds and produced blossoms, and it bore ripe almonds. Now this is very interesting in that uh, Aaron's rod which I believe is actually the rod that Moses brought back uh, with him from the, uh, from the desert, you know, the one that he performed all the miracles with. Because at one point, Moses is giving Aaron his rod to throw down. And uh, if you do a study on that word rod or staff, actually that word is, it also means staff. It also means tribe, believe it or not. But anyway, um, that rod they're calling it, that was symbolizing the house of Levi was put in when they were all jealous about who should be the priest, and God uh, chose the house of Aaron to be the priest. Now, isn't that interesting? It's an almond tree that blossoms, and then we had Jacob putting his head down at a place called Almond Grove, Luz, and then that became Bethel, you know, the house of God. And um, so here we have, um, again, almonds and um, the house of God, you know, the tent of meeting, the, later on, you know, the temple. But, for, but here we are with Aaron establishing that he's going to be uh, the high priest. He's going to be the priesthood, that the family of Aaron. In Levi, of course, you know, Levi's, but the high priest was Aaron. So in the Ecclesiastic now, I'm popping it here. This is the, the usage of this same word. But now this has to do with... Um, so furthermore, men are afraid of high places and terrors on the road. The almond tree blossoms. Now, this is actually talking about getting old. When, uh, if you go to a, uh, a gathering of old people and you look out, you'll see the white heads. It'll be like almond blossoms. So, now, I'm going to preach here for a half second. Let's see, here we are back to this word talking about old age and almond you're actually as you get older you're called into the place of intercession you're actually you're, you're becoming you know you're an almond tree you should be uh, praying for uh, the next generation and for the house you know for the purposes of God on the earth so you should be becoming a, an almond tree an almond blossom 
So as you get older, your hair turns white and you're called into the place of intercession. So how do you like that? And Jeremiah... Uh, now this... I'm, I'd like to break this down um, because there's two things. You'd have to get the next word also. But God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? And he says, I see an almond tree. And then the Lord says, you, you've seen well because I'm watching over my, my word to perform it. And you'd have to realize that uh, this, the, the root of uh, almond, yeah, we can go there. We're done with these four verses. 82, now this is the root word for almond. Now look, here it's shakad. Shakad. And it means to wake, watch, be awake. So you get the watchman metaphor also. And of course, the watchman on the wall, the watchers. And of course, that's also the place of intercession. We're supposed to be watchmen, especially as you become an almond blossom in uh, Ecclesiastics. But uh, let's see, Jeremiah again. Oh, that's that. Oh, you can't really see it good. But, and the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching my word to perform it. Now, this is the, the root word of the first verse, if you remember. What do you see? I see an almond branch. Now, that almond branch, I believe, is the beautiful branch, you know, the, the Messiah. But he's watching over his word to perform it. There's a play. And there's a tie-in to the priesthood because he's talking about almond trees. And also, since he's talking about the word of the Lord, he's talking about the prophetic because he speaks to his prophets. And, of course, he speaks to all of us. If you're in the Lord, I mean, it says, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So if you're hearing his voice, if you're his sheep, you should be hearing his voice. And... There you are. That's the, and it says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if you testify about Jesus, then you're getting the right spirit. Watchmen word. Uh, this. This. Uh, shakad. Shakad. That's the root word again. Here, let's look at it again. This is the root word of almond. To wake, to watch, awake, be alert. To keep watch. To be wakeful over so as you can see here these almond trees are so much awake that they even before they get leaves they're they're blooming okay so there's a picture there now let's go a little bit further into this study and I'm as you can see I'm rushing through it okay another word that means almond or like almond blossom but uh is shakad shakad this is 8246 and the root word is 8247 it uh, four different verses in scripture has it and it's talking about the uh, the golden lampstand here let's get the another So if you look at Exodus 25, 33, and 34, and then also Exodus 37, uh, 19, and 20, you'll see that they're talking. It says, uh, here, let's look at the 37, 19. Three bowls made after the fashion of almonds in one branch, a knob and a flower. Three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knob and a flower. So that's kind of that's kind of hard to to follow. You almost have to look at the whole the whole verses here. And then you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. A lampstand and its base and its shaft are made of hammered work of cups and bulbs and its flowers. One piece. It says six branches shall go out from it, side and three branches. The lampstand 
on one side and three branches of the lampstand on the other side. Uh, three cups shall be shaped like almonds and one branch in its bulb. So you can look at this. I'm not reading it very well, but it breaks down to that you're going to have six branches from one center beam, one center post, and um, where the two branches come out, you're going to have First, you're going to have a flower, an almond flower, and then on each branch, you'll have an almond flower, and then you'll have two more almond flowers up the branch to the top where you'll put lamps, actual lamps. So what they're, this golden lampstand, uh, if you can see here, I wrote the almond tree. Menorah. There we are. That's the word. Menorah. So this is the... The first place where a menorah is called out is in uh, Exodus. And Moses is giving the description of how you build a menorah. And the menorah is actually in the shape of an almond tree. So whenever you see a menorah, you should be thinking almond trees. There's a tie-in, a direct tie-in to menorah. and But this is what a menorah look like and this is how if you look in uh, Exodus and you start to work out how what they're talking about they're talking about a pod and a flower it says that in the on the center beam there's going to be four flowers one two three and then the fourth one they're going to put a lamp a golden lamp this is all gold pure gold um, and then you've got a flower right here and a pod and another one and another one so you got three for each branch and there's a, t a branch on each side so there's six branches total and there's three flowers on each branch one two three and if you notice the photo here you see how the flowers are on the branch all over the place so there's a flower on each each branch here and they have seven lamps that they put on the stand so in the end if you count up all the flowers you have uh, three 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 you have 18 on the branches and then you have four so that comes up to 22 almond flowers now if this would go on past blooming uh, you'd get almonds so and in place of almonds, they have the flame of the Lord. And, of course, this is um, the oil symbolizes uh, the Holy Spirit, of course. The oil of the Lord. So, there you are. So, whenever you see Moriah in Scripture, you can, uh, I can anyway, say, oh, we're talking about an almond tree. Menorah. So a menorah is a lampstand, but it's a seven lamp lampstand with 22 almond flowers. And here, look at. Uh, here's in Zechariah. Now this is, in Zechariah 4, talks about uh, what do you see? God's asking, what do you see? I see a lampstand. And he gives a real good description. And it's the same description that you'll see in, uh, in, Exodus, in Exodus that Moses gave out. He says, a lampstand, all gold, top seven lamps, seven spouts uh, belonging to each lamp and then it talks about we don't have the whole verses opened up here but it says that there's two olive trees and it says then I said to him what are these two olive trees on the right of the lampstand on the left Zechariah and four and verse 11 now what I want to show you here is this is interesting 
says, uh, look at 14. And then he said, these are the two anointed ones. Now, if you look at the words for anointed, oh, I don't even have that center, do I? Let's try this. See that word anoint, anointed? It's two words. Ben, which means son. A son, a builder. And then oil. So it's son, oil, and then ones is actually son. So anointed. So uh, sons of oil. Sons. I like that. So uh, you need a... These are two sons of oil. Uh, and it says standing by... Now this is actually Adonai. Adonai of the whole earth. Now, the thing about Adonai is it only shows up... I think it shows up about oh, 400 times in Scripture. If, I'm, if I can remember right. 200 of those are in, uh, I think, in, is it, it's either Ezekiel or Jeremiah. So, and normally, and when they say Adonai, it'll say Adonai Yahweh normally. So, uh, the reason I bring that out is uh, so often they try to uh, hide the word Yahweh or Yahweh. And, uh, which means, you know, the self-existent one. Now, Adonai means Lord. So, Lord Yahweh is normally how that word is presented. But here it's presented Lord of the whole earth. So, the first time in scripture where Menorah shows up, um, is when the Lord is telling Moses how to make them. So it's supposed to have seven uh, lamps. It has six branches and then the center beam. And then it has uh, a total of 22 flowers. So it's very interesting. So whenever you see menorah, menorah. Whenever you see a menorah, you should be thinking almond tree. Now let's look at the root words of menorah. Menorah. Manor, and it means beam. So that's how come I was trying to say beam because I knew the root word. So that's the center post. And what, the places where it talks about beams here is, well, I think that's Goliath, David and Goliath, his weaver beam spear. I mean, it's, it means it's pretty, pretty hefty. So again, Goliath and uh, whose spear was like a weaver's beam. So this is the that beam. So we have a beam and then we have near. Now I don't know why near which means plow or to till uh, has to do with beam. But that's what it is. So the root of menorah was the beam and then this word Near. Near. Menorah. Near. Near. It means lamp. This word shows up uh, 43 times. And the first place where lamp actually shows up is the seven lamps for the menorah. For the lampstand. So, and of course, if you look at uh, uh, the seven spirits of God, we can look at that another time if you're interested. They actually name the names of the seven spirit uh, of the Lord. And then also in Revelation, it talks about the seven spirits of God uh, before the throne. But uh, so, uh, I probably should throw that in here. So you see how these word studies take you all over the place. Now we haven't even looked at uh, staff we know that the the staff that blossomed was an almond branch, you know, Aaron's staff. So you should actually do a study on staff, which is very fascinating. Um, if I threw that in, we would be going uh, so much longer. So um, 
unless you want me to, if you guys want me to talk about uh, staff, I will. It's very fascinating. The, the rod, the staff of Moses, it's called the uh, staff of God uh, twice in Scripture. The staff of Elohim, and of course that's the plural form of God. And, and also at one point, it, it t Moses, the scripture says that uh, uh, Moses is to perform all of his miracles with this staff. And the one that turned into the snake. That's how I think the, the staff, Aaron's staff, is that same staff in my, my, my thinking. Um, because the... <laughs> Um, let me not get in there. But anyway, if you look at it, I think it's the same staff. In the end, it's the one that goes into the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And it's the one when uh, God tells him to get the staff. And he gets the staff from the tent of meeting. He didn't, he didn't have his staff he, that he was supposed to, you know, a different staff. He went to the one that was uh, the almond tree came out. And he was all upset, and if you remember, he strikes, strikes the rock twice, and God said, you've, you've messed up, you won't be able to enter into the promised land. But, it's very interesting that, the, that he gets that rod or that staff from the tent of meeting, and he strikes, I mean, it's already blossomed and bloomed, it already has almonds on it, and he's hitting the rock uh, with it twice. The Lord said to speak to the rock. Don't hit it. I mean, the first time, a different time, before the staff bloomed and blossomed and things, there was a time the Lord said uh, when they were first leaving to strike the rock. But it was actually a different word for rock. It was, uh, see? Uh, too much. Okay. So as you can see, these word searches, if you start looking, will take you all over the scripture and will open it up at another place and you realize uh, things are just tied to, at least I realize that things are tied to in a whole different way. And whenever you see a menorah, you should be thinking almond tree. You should be thinking intercession. You should also be thinking at the prophetic, uh, the anointing. Um, the two anointings, and we want to become sons of oil. We want to have uh, those olive trees dripping on us. Okay, love you guys. Bye-bye.